We have Jake Powell here with us. Uh, Jake, tell us a little bit about yourself and how you first heard the words congenital diaphragmatic hernia. Sure, yeah, so Jay Cal, um, family of four, um, as we'll talk more about, uh, we lost one of our children to CDH, um, but um, married to my wife, Erica, and my daughter, Caitlin, uh, my daughter, Brooke, and we lost our daughter, Maddie, and now we have fortunately had another son after Maddie, uh, Cole. So that's a little bit about myself. First time I ever heard of CDH was, uh, literally in the NICU after uh, Maddie was born in 2017. And um, a, a doctor had flown in from one of the nearby hospitals and mentioned to us that Maddie had a severe case of uh, CDH. Unfortunately for us, it was uh, undiagnosed. Um, we, we come to find out, um, did not have a third trimester scan for Maddie. Um, and that's likely when it developed um, and didn't seem, you know, unusual for us not to have that scan since we had two healthy babies before that um, and no, no complications, no issues with that. And so I don't think the doctors or my wife or myself even thought about not having a third trimester scan. Um, but unfortunately, uh, this, the, um, the diaphragmatic hernia developed in that third trimester, we believe. And so the first time we found out was when Maddie came out, was struggling to breathe, um, went to the NICU, doctors did some scans and told us, um, you know, they, they thought it was um, this, but weren't quite sure as well, because the scans at the regional hospital weren't as good uh, technology as likely some of the other hospitals. So they, they wanted to medevac her to um, a, a larger hospital nearby and, and confirm that as well as treat her. Um, you know, you know, and unbeknownst to us, uh, in that time span, looking back, um, how critical she really was, um, and, and how great the doctors were able to, you know, um, coach us through how Maddie was going to be medevaced down to the the regional hospital and, and get better care there. But looking back, we're we're just surprised. I'm surprised that she even made it through that flight um, in there because it was just so severe and, and the lung was just so underdeveloped. Um, but once we got down to UCLA or um, Regional Hospital, um, she was in the, the IC unit down there and just lots of tubes, lots of uh, um, other babies in there and just very shocking and, and emotional in, in that moment um, to kind of take it all in and then try to figure out trying to Google what CDH is. And that's the first time that I actually had found out about um, CDHI and Cherubs was just Googling it and, and seeing some of the, the Google hits on it. And so you start reading about it and going, okay, um, we're not alone, but you kind of feel alone because you, you're just reading um, stuff about it and, and don't know uh, the survival rate, don't know um, the, the road ahead, whether the next 10 minutes versus the next, for us, it was, nine days, uh, Maddie was able to fight, but um, you know, I really found some help in coming back to the Cherub site. Cause you know, when you first find out about uh, anything, a lot of the times you go to different sources. And so I tried to go to multiple different sources and Eric and I, my wife kept coming back to Cherubs just because there was just better information and better kind of start to finish of what this is and what the road ahead might be. And then found other, other stories um, on the website to, to um, you know, educate us and give us some hope as well as some um, some reality of what what might be, uh, be coming to because the survival rate's not not good, um, and and that kind of just led me down to um, learning more about CDH and just wanting to get involved too, just in that moment, going, okay, this is a good organization. How how can we help other parents who might be going through this? So. Um, you know, Maddie had a, uh, had CDH and then she ultimately passed of complications just through the ECMO machine, started developing a clot, um, almost on day two, which was very minor. Um, they didn't think it was going to become much, but eventually, um, if you imagine kind of, a a hose just pushing through blood and eventually get a clot on it and that clot continues to build, it eventually clogs that hose. And um, where the the um, 
cannula, it's called, was injected into her heart. It it was either open heart surgery for, you know, a five-day-old baby or a three-day-old baby, um, or hope that uh, that clot would eventually break and uh, not cause a massive stroke. And so we talked to um, many professionals at the regional hospital in, in Los Angeles. And, you know, taking kind of a step back afterwards, you look at it and you go, oh my gosh, I was kind of in the presence of these brilliant people. And um, they're telling me as much as they can do for my daughter. And, it, you know, in that moment, as soon as we got through that, not only was I, was I kind of kind of stunned that we're in this position, you never imagine yourself being with some of the top doctors in greater Los Angeles, which there's millions of people. And so you're kind of just going, I can't believe this is even happening. And then two, um, you know, we were so gung-ho on fighting for Maddie and making that fight work that, um, you know, eventually as I sat there, you kind of get to the realization of what they're really trying to tell you without telling you. And that we shouldn't do heart surgery, yet the likelihood of her surviving is very low, almost zero. And so let's talk how to make her comfortable and how to prepare for not having her. And that was kind of the, the kind of boom, this is CDH. This is, this is what it does. This is what it does to people. This is what it does to, to families. And, um, you know, that was kind of the, the burning sensation for me to continue to learn more about it and find an avenue to help because, you know, no family should ever, no person should ever go through what we did in, in those days and in that moment of going, there, there's nothing I can do So it, to help Maddie, but the only thing I can do is potentially help CDH and the research and the um, awareness and the support for other families to um, help get them through this in some way, shape or form. So that was a long-winded answer, Don, to how I first heard about CDH and how I got involved with CDH as well. But it's, um, I'm so sorry for your loss and so grateful that you're sharing Maddie's story with us. And and, and uh, I, I like how you put it, uh, this is how CDH affects the family, because we don't talk about that enough. You know, we talk about the kids or we talk about the adult survivors, but we don't talk about the whole picture. And we really need to do a better job of that um, yeah. because it does, you know, especially, you know, older siblings. Um, who go through that and, and then, you know, parents and marriages and extended family and the grandparents, you yeah. know, they're grieving twice and, because they're grieving for their children who have lost a child and they're grieving for their grandchild. And, yeah. and you're right, we need, to, we need to, to make more of a whole family approach to how we help families through um, CDH. But um, so you and Erica have decided to take Maddie's legacy and her story and and all the love you have for her and and pay it forward and help others and as part of that you have signed on as a volunteer for the charity and we're very grateful to have you on the awareness team thank you very much absolutely you did, you did something very few people have been able to do over the years and that's get a proclamation from california so thank you <laughs> thank you very much absolutely really hard for some reason with California so we appreciate that yeah. um do you have any advice um for for you know new parents um it you know my son was diagnosed at birth too and it's a different journey it's not easier or harder being diagnosed in utero but it's just different yeah. um yeah you know there's positives and negatives to both sides but do you have any advice for those families who are just now in the hospital, just now been dealt these cards, anything that you wish you had known or could have been prepared for? Um, you know, I, I think I recently reached out to um, a lady here in California who um, I think she found out before but now is going through um, trying to help her um, her child survive it. And I kind of, you know, always come back to people are always going to try to um, 
help you and, and kind of give you kind words or kind gestures or, you know, time will heal. They'll give you these, these quotes and doctors will say things. And I think my advice would be almost don't read into it, if you will. Don't, don't kind of um, just let those words come, in, come and go. Um, and some will sink in better than others, but some, sometimes there's so much um, pain going on. Don't let people rub you the wrong way in some of those, those moments. I know that was hard for my wife. Um, a lot of the times she would, somebody would say something, she'd be like, that means nothing to me right now. That doesn't help me. All I want is my child to come home safe and that's not going to happen. And so I think try not to focus in on those things, but more so focus in on um, getting those that you love most, your family and your friends that you're closest to, even closer. Bring them in even closer. Get closer through this um, this chapter in your life because it will be a chapter. Um, and, you know, lean on those people and fall in love even more, become better friends, find a way to become a better family because of this and grow together would be my best advice. And because those people are the ones that are going to help you through it the best. And everybody has good intents in trying to give you advice. It may come as good advice or it may come as, uh, I can't believe that person said that. So let that go. Nobody's trying to, they're trying to do the right thing, but it's not, not always going to help. And, you know, I, I kind of flash back to the heart surgeon that, um, that Maddie had, and she was wonderful. She literally stopped open heart surgery on an adult to come and help Maddie when she first had the heart issue and helped her survive on day two, which got her to day nine. But um, she was very um, cold shoulder, if you will. And I didn't understand why, because I knew she was a parent too. And I, and I couldn't understand at the time. But in looking back, I mean, that lady has um, immense pressure and immense duty to go in day in and day out. And she sees people come and go all the time. Some people live, some people die, and that's just the nature of her job. And unfortunately for us, we were just another person, a snapshot in her in her time, and she did what she could. And she and if and if she could have done more, she would have. Um, but at that time, I really kind of took that in, going, "Man, I wish she was just a little bit softer." But um, unfortunately, it wasn't. I don't think she meant to do it. She was just giving me the facts and saying, "You know, this is what it is." And if I could help you more, I would, Jake. But um, I can't, and so let, let's find a way forward. And that's kind of why I say you'll, you'll likely need to rely on your friends and family more so than others, and um, that would be my best advice. And also just know that there's resources out there. There's CDH like we have here, which is a great group uh, of people who have gone through this and know people have gone through this and want to help you in any way, shape, or form. So um, don't feel like you can't reach out and ask a question because we've all been there, and don't be, if you don't ask, you won't get an answer. You won't get support. So, thank you. Yeah. Great answer. Yeah, thank you very much. Sure. Um, thank you for sharing your story. Thank you for volunteering. Um, I look forward to working with you more on on the backside of the charity and in getting to know your family and uh, Maddie's story more. No, thank I appreciate you. the time. Thanks, Don. Nice meeting you in person too. You too. All right.